Love has been with us for thousands of years. They say it makes the world go round. So why is it so hard to figure out? Just in time for Valentine's Day, Dr. Fred Noor, whose new book, True Love, tells us how to use science and understand love. And he joins us now to discuss. Welcome, Dr. Noor. So good to have you here. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Can science really help us understand something that seems so irrational? It is not irrational. It's unconscious, but it has physical basis. Fascinating. So do you think that modern love is different than the kind of love human beings experienced thousands of years ago? No, love has not changed over many centuries. It took 150 million years to develop love, so it's not going to change over just even a few centuries. And you describe love as something that happens over four phases. And those of us who are lucky enough to get to the fourth phase, that's where the pay dirt lies, right? That's where true love lies. But walk yes. us through the other stages. Where does it begin? First phase is mate selection, where you choose a mate you're going to be with. Second phase is romance, where you fall in love. Third phase is falling out of love. And you say that this is inevitable, that everyone who falls into love will inevitably reach that third phase of falling out of love. That's correct. And then, though, do not despair, because if you stick with it, if you look at your mate at this point with cold eyes and say, I did a pretty good job choosing this mate, I may not be in the throes of romantic, passionate love, but my mate is good, and if you stick through the hard part of falling out of love, you then reach... True love. True Correct. love. And that will last you for a lifetime. So that's the tricky part, though, right? How many the people patience. get stuck in the, uh, in the third phase? Well, if you know that the third phase is limited, is going to go away, it's much easier to put up with it and accept. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the, the first phase, mate selection, because I found this fascinating. You say things like our sense of smell come into play here. That's How correct. does that work? You use different sensation, you use vision, hearing, and smell, and we use smell to select the perfect mate for your own unique genes. So it's your genes that are doing the attracting. My, you see someone and you think that person is attractive to me, and unconsciously it's your genes saying, oh, if my genes mixed with that person's genes, we'd have good offspring? That's correct. Use the sensation to identify who is the perfect genetic match for your own unique genes. Everybody has different genes, so the perfect match for a person is different from other people. That's fascinating. So, so if someone's smell turns you off, that could be your genes telling you that's not the right Absolutely match. correct, and that was proven by scientific studies. It's something you can't find in online dating, though, right? <laughs> no, that's a big liability for online dating, yes. <laughs> you don't have that chance to smell your potential mate until that first coffee date. Now, why is, when you look at sort of Western mate selection and Western marriages where you marry the person that you fall in love with independently versus Eastern, uh, in more Eastern societies where marriages are often prearranged, why did those marriages tend to last longer than ones that come from self-selection? It is mainly because of phase one of mate selection, the expectation of that. In the Western modern model, we believe that anybody can marry anybody, and we form a series of images and dreams that we acquire from the media, from romantic novels, and we form this uh, image of a perfect mate that we keep looking for. Uh, so you say, so in the Western model, sometimes our expectations are too elevated. That's correct. Uh, sometimes totally unrealistic. We're looking for, you know, a body like Brad Pitt and a mind like Albert Einstein. <laughs> That's absolutely correct, yes. <laughs> so, so in the, and then in the Eastern model, the expectations are more managed, is what you're saying. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. So explain the phase the falling out of love, so that people are not alarmed by this phase. Explain what's happening scientifically to our minds, because you say love is in the mind, not in the heart, correct? That's correct. The heart has nothing to do with love. It's all in the brain. So what is happening when we fall out of love with our romantic partner? In romance, we release a group of chemicals for chemicals called uh, monoamines, and their effect, or the purpose ends, so their effect ends. So we are out of the illusion, delusion, euphoria of falling in love. So the euphoria is gone. 
And, is, right. and at what point does this happen? A year into the relationship, two years? It's three usually years? about two years. Most of the time, it happened in the third year of, of the relationship. Yes. So at this point, we're falling out of love. We should not be alarmed, correct? That's correct. It has benefit for us. Nisha designed that for our benefit. What should we do with this information? I mean, is this also the good time to end a bad relationship? If you feel you choose a mate who is total dismatch for you, that you believe the future of that is going to be disastrous, then that's the time to reevaluate and re-choose again. Because our gene selection is limited, is what you're saying. I mean, our genes will tell us sometimes short-term attraction, but not necessarily long-term attraction. No, more, more likely we did not use the instinct to choose. We use our conscious mind. Ah. We selected somebody based on a checklist ah. rather than listening to our instinct, or people call it listen to your heart. So do you recommend then letting our instincts lead the way with love and not our minds? That's correct. Instinct is based on real science, and it's more accurate. But then doesn't that, if, as a parent, I could imagine my daughter falling in love with a, t you know, a terrible guy, and she says, but mom, I love him, but to my eyes, he doesn't have a job, or he doesn't have a future. And so, is, is that a good instinct? It is not. But okay. when she falls out of love, she'll be able to see him for what he is, and that might be the time for her to reevaluate her choice and choose another person who is a better match for her. Right, and then hopefully when you fall out of love, you do still like your mate and realize we can put in the, the, the work. The great majority of the time, that's the case. So if you just hang in there and wait, true love will come. And true love does not look like mad, passionate, romantic love. What does it look like? No, true love come gradually, slowly, takes effort and time, but at the end, it's much more enjoyable, causes much better joy and happiness than romance. We can all hope for true love. Dr. Noor, thank you so much for that fascinating insight. You're welcome. It's my pleasure to be here.